Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about my biggest mistakes in my first year as a landlord and the things that I'm actually most proud of in my first year as a landlord. So go grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. So technically, it hasn't been an entire year of me being a landlord. It's been more more like half a year to a little bit more than half a year. So the first couple of mistakes pertain to when I first purchased this investment property and got it ready to be rented out and became a landlord. The first biggest mistake, and my husband and I talk about this often when we recall our journey into real estate investing, is stalling when it came to hiring labor. So the first property we purchased it was two units and one of them needed a lot of work and I for one was really excited to just be in this journey so I wanted to do a lot of the work myself but there was some times when we would hit the end of the road and realize okay we kind of need an expert or a professional to do this but because of some stubbornness on my end we ended up just stalling and stalling and all of that time that was wasted could have been used to hire somebody and get the job done sooner and get tenants in sooner and start making income from rent sooner so looking back it took us about an almost an entire year to renovate the entire unit it probably could have been done in like two months and i'm just i'm just guessing but i think it could have done in a much shorter time span and all of that time that was wasted is actually money that was wasted so if we're trying to be frugal not to hire labor it's going to take you this much longer to do you might as well just hire the labor and get it done early so for our next investment property if it were going to be a fixer upper we think we want to stay away from that but if there's any work that needs to be done higher labor the sooner the better next is to have a concrete plan that you stick to and follow through we realized after the fact that we could have rented out the other unit that was pretty much mostly ready while we were working on the first unit but because it's our first ever investment property we made a lot of mistakes and this was one of them so we didn't think we wanted to rent out one unit while we while the other one still had a lot of work and we were going in and out of the building but now that i look back on it i'm like we didn't need to do that one of the units was it needed just a couple of things that took us maybe like two weeks so we like a fresh coat of paint some work done in the bathroom and it was ready to rent out we could have had it rented out for the entire time that we were working on the lower unit because they're obviously completely separate and one has nothing to do with the other so if we would have removed ourselves from the situation and looked at it a little bit more objectively then maybe we would have realized there's no reason not to knock off those smaller projects in the almost ready unit first so that we could get it rented out and maybe it would have helped us pay off some of the expenses that the other unit was incurring if that makes sense so i look back on that and i'm like that was a lot of time that we could have been collecting grant but I guess another part of it is we were a little bit afraid of the whole process of getting a tenant in. We didn't really know how we were going to do it, like what platforms were we going to use to advertise for it, how do you do a background check. So we weren't really there in that mental space at the time to rent out. But I feel like if we had a plan and we really looked at it objectively, like this unit is ready, what do we need to do to get tenants in as soon as possible? That's the approach I would take for the if I could do it again or for the second um, investment property is not just like th there really was no no reason to stall that long. So the third mistake came after we became landlords. The first two are mostly about after buying the first investment property. Those are the things that I regret doing. I regret not doing a thorough walkthrough with my tenants before they occupied the space and the reason why I say this is um, one of my tenants as soon as they moved in they put a fresh coat of paint in some of the rooms. They didn't finish. They got some of the paint on the ceilings. I guess it's their first time renting. Like they, I don't know where they were living before but they were violating some things that were to us very obvious not to do's and to this tenant they didn't know they were not supposed to be doing those things so i would do a thorough walkthrough and have like a checklist and say okay if there's any flaws in the apartment like we can point them out right now um but the way you're renting it the way it looks like right now is how we want to get it back they did some other things too, but I don't want to get into all those things. It, in the end, it's not a big deal, 
but I just I feel like if we were on the same page from day one it would have made things a lot easier and having some kind of physical list where you're walking through with them they kind of would know okay so they want it to be exactly what it looks like right now maybe I won't go change the living room walls and you know another mistake and this is something that I should still get better on is not checking on the property as often as I should I'm really lucky right now that the tenants that I have are amazing they tell me if something happened for example there was a storm that kind of half blew off one of the side of the house's gutters and because of the storm it was it's really hard to travel so getting it's not it's not the closest to me either so getting to that property is a little bit of a challenge sometimes um, so they let me know about the gutters and even sent me pictures and then there was like some lawn damage because of the city snow plows so th that's all stuff that if I were to go and check on the property as often as I should I would know on my own but because I'm taking the lazy route and I have really good tenants who just like keep me informed I also have a snow plower guy who let me know about the city snow plows the city snow plowers damaging my lawn so all these people letting me know what's going on kind of gives me a sense of peace and basically I kind of check up on the property without having to physically be there but I know I should physically go there more often than I do so this is not a mistake but this is just one note I want to make about this if you are still in the process of purchasing an investment property I highly 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 recommend it be in an area that you're able to travel to on short notice or you're able able to commute to back and forth without any difficulties so the closer it is to you the more likely you are to go and visit it more often and check on it and make sure everything is going well and if you're going to purchase multiple investment properties then be strategic about where those properties are going to be like you don't want one that's like 20 miles up north and then another one that's like 30 miles south from where you are you want to keep them if it's possible keep them as close to each other as possible so that if you're doing like runs and just like checking on them or if you need to collect rent like if it's a physical rent on a specific day of the month then you can go and knock them all out and if you're hiring services like a lawn mowing service or a snow removal service and you can hire from the same company because they're like they'll likely cover the same area instead of having to hire multiple different companies for different areas and you know then it becomes harder to keep track of and that just ends up being more work for you those are the four mistakes i really wanted to talk about and get them out of the way i really hope that if you're watching this in time that you learn from my mistakes and that you don't stall when it comes to hiring labor be really strategic about the location of the property that you're choosing have a solid and concrete plan for what you're gonna do once you purchase the property and check on the property as often as you can now in the next part of this video i'm going to talk about what i'm most proud of and what i think that we did right as landlords in our very first year before i do please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that like button okay just as a disclaimer some of these might come off as a little bit controversial don't come at me in the comments this is what works for us as landlords. If you're a tenant or if you're a landlord and you have different views, go ahead and share them in the comments. But these are my views and it's just, I think that this is what works best for me. So number one is not allowing tenants to do any labor for reduced rent. Now I'll give you an example. One of our tenants wanted to mow the lawn in exchange for cheaper rent every month and we refuse and instead I hired a lawn mowing service to come and regularly mow our lawn. Now it might sound mean right off the bat because why not like it's a win-win and I know a lot of landlords and tenants have this agreement and it just makes sense for them. The reason why I choose to just have a service do it and actually it costs me more than if I were just to knock off a little bit off the rent for this tenant is because I don't want to have to ever pass buy the property and realize the lawn doesn't look the way I want it to look and we're already we already have this agreement for reduced rent I just don't want to have that relationship with my tenant where they're kind of also working for me if that makes any sense like I just want to be put at ease and have like a division of labor if, if that makes sense if it's a professional lawn service and I just feel more at ease and I know that the lawn is getting cut whereas if it's a tenant and I don't know that tenant really well and even if I do know them really well I just don't want to ever be put in that position I just rather it be clean and simple and easy tenant just pays the full rent and I pay for all of the services that need to get done separately. The second thing that I don't plan on changing in any future investment properties that I plan to own 
is not providing appliances and i know this is going to sound controversial and mean too but hear me out when you provide appliances you become responsible for those appliances and i don't know any of my tenants or any of my future tenants well enough to know how they're going to care for those appliances i don't want to increase the likelihood of getting a phone call of something not working again this is something that i can charge higher rents for if i provide those appliances but i would rather just charge less and let them provide their own appliances that they're responsible for it even happened where i provided appliances but i did not let the rent reflect that those appliances actually came with the building that we purchased so my husband and i let the tenants know ahead of time you don't have to use them if you don't want to like we can replace them with your appliances if you would like we don't know what works perfectly and what doesn't like i mean when we checked it out everything worked but i, I can't guarantee that it's going to continue to work so we let them know that like we're giving them to you but like we don't really want to be responsible for them and like i said the rent it was not really reflecting us providing appliances Guess what happens as soon as one of those appliances stops working? We get a phone call letting us know that that appliance stopped working. Either they forgot or they just didn't, there was a miscommunication somewhere. So we ended up having to purchase a new oven from Home Depot and have it shipped out. So now we're responsible for this new oven. It's not fun. I would rather just not have appliances at all and let them be responsible for it. And I've heard this story from other landlords as well where they tell them, okay, the appliances are here, to, but you don't have to use them. You can get your own. And I'm not held responsible for those appliances. It's, you know, they're pretty much disposable and I don't care what happens to them. And they would still get phone calls when something happens to that appliance. So just a personal preference not to be responsible for appliances. And thirdly is being diligent when it came to choosing our tenants. For some of our tenants, we got a little bit lucky. It's not that we know them personally, but we know people who knew them so we could kind of ask about them. And for other tenants, we used pretty much apartments.com and Zillow to do the vetting process. And we got background checks, credit checks. I also did phone calls to work references and previous landlords. So being diligent in choosing our tenant and not rushing to choose those tenants is something that I hope that we continue to do in our future investment properties as well, because who your tenant is is so important. You want somebody who's going to be clean and you want somebody who's going to take care of your property and who's going to pay your rent on time because if you don't have that person, I've seen it where landlords just want to sell all of their properties because they're so sick of it and so fed up. But I really, really believe that the type of tenants that you choose and your vetting process are the keys in. And yes, it can be a little bit challenging to find that tenant because how do you know? Part of it for me is the vibes. Like we interviewed and we did tours um, of our units before we selected one of our tenants and we interviewed more than one person and we just felt really comfortable with this person and lo and behold, it, it was a great fit for us. This kind of ties into another point that I wanna make. The first investment property that you choose should be something that you can afford even if it's vacant. That way you can afford to take your time vetting the tenants and you're never put in a position where you're desperate and you need to rush and just pick anybody and then you have this like whole process of just a nightmare tenant not taking care of your property or not paying rent and you need to go back and forth and, the end, and in the end you shoot yourself in the foot because now you have legal fees to pay. So making sure that that first investment property is something that is affordable to you or you have some kind of stream of income that can cover any expenses that are incurred due to vacancy is something that will give you the luxury of time when it comes to choosing your tenant that is all for today's video guys thank you so much for watching please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button let me know in the comments what do you think of allowing your tenant to do labor for reduced rent is it something that you're for or would you rather like me outsource those tasks